I tell you, getting in the presence of the Lord will energize you. It will satisfy you. But most importantly, it will change you. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the man went in and the cloud filled the inner court, which is the holy place. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub. As soon as I was saying that, I was carried momentarily in my mind so that I could hear Brother Branham telling in the tent vision how that glory of the Lord went and left the platform and hung over that little room, he called it. We now know that it wasn't a little room, but it was a tent within a tent. It was a small little structure there, a stretch of canvas one time he called it, a tent within a tent. And the Lord said in that vision, just like he did in the scripture, I will meet you in there. That little tent represents a bridal chamber, a nuptial chamber, a hoopah, if you will, a place where bridegroom and bride come together and they are no longer individuals. And in that little holy place where the presence of God is, to us it's like the holy of holies. It's in there where we are most changed from glory to glory. How many of you want to spend some time in there? In the holy presence, in the kavod, in the glory of the Lord, in the bridal chamber. And God put those holy cherubims, placed them at the going in of the garden. And the Bible simply says, we like to say, they were there to keep Adam and Eve out. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says they were placed there to guard the way. They were placed there to guard the way to the tree of life. It doesn't mean that no man will ever be allowed to get to the tree. How many of you are glad you found your way? But it means that it won't be just a happenstance or some haphazard approach if you make it all the way to the tree of life and you receive the life of Jesus Christ into the innermost part of your being, you're going to have to pass by the cherubims to get there. So we know that the cherubims, though they are heavenly creatures created to worship God, and they are comparable even to the four living creatures that we read about in the book of the Revelation, they are directly somehow connected to the overcoming bride of Jesus Christ. And so if cherubim's worship, this bride is going to have to find her way into the spirit of worship. They're going to have to praise until the spirit of worship comes the anointing to worship comes and then worship until the glory comes. And when the glory comes, you stand under and in the glory because you want it to have its maximum effect in your life. Remember what he told us about that little room on the inside. He said, they'll go in one way and come out another way. When God allowed me to revisit that place in the spirit, he showed me that very thing happening. People going in with their problems, with their hang-ups, not just physical deformity, but also inward infirmity. Inner healing needed. But when they came out the other side, they had lost all of their intimidations. They had lost all of their hang-ups and their warts and all the problems that they had had their inferiority complexes. Listen, if you can get in the glory of the Lord and stay there long enough, you'll lose all of your complexes. You spend enough time in the glory of the Lord, you'll lose your complexes. 
I can't see a promise for the church to live in his presence. But I can see a promise that the bride, as she's changed from glory to glory, will be able to live. Live in his presence.